Philippians 1 and 20. But this means war. Amen. Anybody geared up for war? Anybody ready? Because this battle, my brothers and sisters, is not pretty much carnal, but it's spiritual warfare that we're dealing with, my brothers and sisters. But we're going to trust in God and continue to press on and move on. Amen. As much as it hurts, I'm always. It's tough. It's rough out here, but we're going to make it. We're going to get through this thing. Amen. 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 I just want to light up some things here. I am just ecstatic and excited because if I'm not mistaken, on Tuesday, uh, my wife and I will celebrate 14 years of marriage. Thank God for all that she's done and is doing for our family. 14 years. That's a long time. Yeah. That's a long time. So we're very grateful and thankful for those 14 years. That's 14 years. Girl, I've known you a long time. Amen. A lifetime to go. Amen. So we just thank God for her and our family. And uh, we appreciate your prayers. 14 years that the Lord allow us to see it on Tuesday. I don't know if we're going to eat a cheeseburger or a ham sandwich, but it's going to be all right. We're going to celebrate it. And we're going to do it in style. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all so much. I appreciate that. And at this time, we're going to ask uh, Reverend Terry to come and give us our uh, spiritual Bible for this morning. And then we're going to come and get ready and hear the word because I truly believe that the scripture has something for us this morning. Amen. 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 In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We got an encouraging word that's going to be coming from 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, verse 58. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. You can just write it down and you can find it. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. And this is an encouraging word that no matter what comes against you, 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says this Stand firm. Let nothing move you. Amen. Always give yourselves fully to the works of the Lord. Amen. Because you know that your labor Come in on. the Lord yeah. is not in vain. Amen. And let the church say, Amen. 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 Got to keep working. Got to keep pushing. Yes, sir. Got to keep working. Amen. Amen.
found her on her knees. Mm. On her knees. Wow. Not laying on her back, mm. but on her knees. Because she had a heart attack. Mm. My brothers and sisters, that's one thing that scares me in this world. The scripture tells us that we reap what we sow. Mm. So I want us to continue to sow good seeds because we reap what we sow. And that's been so heavy on my heart this week, not knowing what tomorrow, I don't even know what this evening going to bring. So I need to get my act together and we're going to see if Paul can help us with that today. Are there any others? Keep the Yank family, I'm sorry, in your prayer, please, as well as the Thorn family back home. Keep them in your prayer. My sister got in cancer, she's out. Such good spirit. And uh, I don't know if I can help <clears throat> But she's always smiling. Yeah. Always trying to encourage me. And maybe you the one that needs encouragement. So thank you, church, for what you all have said and done for her. From Lysol to baby wipes. Trust me, she appreciates it all. Because some of those things are still hard to find in Montgomery. But every chance we get, we'll ship something down there to her. And she doesn't, she's taking it day by day. She hurts sometimes. And She's in pain. But when I call, I can tell she tries to pep herself up. And she said to prop me up. Because she said my task is way bigger than hers. But uh, I don't believe it. But I thank God for Sister Wendy Burton. We love you, babe. And you keep on. Keep it on. Are there any other prayer requests that need to be spoken out loud? All right, Reverend Ash, you'll come and bless us. We're going to be coming from Romans, the 12th chapter. Romans 12. Romans 12. Come on, give us a press up. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, The Bible tells us that we should always pray. Always. No matter what time, day, hour, soon. Thank you, wherever you are, it tells us we should always pray. Uh, before we pray, I'd like to have to keep our family in prayer.
everybody want to thank him this morning. How I many you know he's been so good? I don't know. Because we don't want to hear anything about wrongdoing. 
And that's why I kind of disagree with the prosperity gospel. Uh, Sister Jim, yes. they're always talking about your money and yes, all your sow a seed and you'll get 5000 here and there. Yes, but baby, money ain't going to help you when I got some problems at the house. Come on now. Money right now ain't helping Sister in Montgomery deal with a cancer issue. Come money on now. ain't helping that family who doesn't have a job right now. What is money now if you don't have it already? It can't get you out of the situation that you're in. So I like Paul here. He doesn't talk about money. Matter of fact, Paul was a low-down rascal himself. Can I deal with Paul? Yeah. 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 If anybody knew about how you could come across and people would get your language or get what you're saying, it's Paul himself. Wow. Because his Hebrew name uh, was Saul, but the Greek name is Paul. And it's good when you have a name change. That's right. Yeah, I know some people just remember you, oh, that Paul used to be an old drunk. You used to tell the old kid, whatever the case may be. I'm going to put this disclaimer out there. Those things are not true. <laughs> okay, but I know folks will take it and run with it. We'll take it. Uh, Sister Thorne, I didn't know you had married an ex so and so, but to be honest with you, we all an ex son. That's right. No, we all an ex son. And Paul was an ex son, to be right. honest with you. All right. And, and Paul was on his way to persecute Christians. Yeah. Matter of fact, they tell me that Paul held a jail. Yep. Why they just beat him down and demolished him in the streets. That's right. And hell and clothes. Can you imagine holding the folks' clothes and you watching them get beat down and killed? <laughs> it's just, it's amazing. People do that now. Oh, yeah. They don't care what you're going through and what no. you're dealing with. They happy. They ain't it. They they right. 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 You go ahead and go through because I ain't got time to be dealing with you. I'm going to get out your way. Go on and kill them. Persecute them. <laughs> yeah. That's what Paul said. But oh my God, we have to be so careful. Yes, we do. Because if God ever gets his hands on you, get oh. tired of Began to uh, Saul at the time. His name began to change to Paul. He told him, Go down there and see Saul and get your life together. That's what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And so glad that some of you came in the house this morning. Somebody here want to get their life together. I don't know who I'm All talking right to. Now. But I tell you, I can't preach the gospel without having a mirror in front of my face. Right. You see, I have to take Barry White. Huh. Yeah, yeah, my favorite preacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
change. Yes, sir. And that's what I tell us about our brothers and sisters now having a problem with one race or the other. Look, you fear what you don't understand. Are y'all with me here? Yes, sir. You don't need to be scared of anybody because they're Caucasian or because they're black. I don't need to run for my brother because he's got tattoos. You don't need to run for me because I'm browner than you. We're almost the same complexion, to be honest with you. So, Yes, sir. Now, by looking at someone that looks a little different than you and acting, then you are judged quickly. Yes. Get to know that individual. That's right. Get to know that individual can be the kindest, nicest person you ever met. Yeah. But I love it here. Yeah, Paul said, look here, y'all. We got to behave like a Christian. How do you behave like a Christian? Mama, one, what is a Christian? Right. Come on. Yeah, what is a Christian? Can I go down real quick? Yes, sir. We're supposed to be Christ-like. Yes. We're supposed to be followers of Christ. Now, it doesn't take a rocket science to figure out what Christ was all about. That's right. He was all about love. Come on. He was all about respect. Yeah. Let me go on back to them two right there. We can go on and close out. He was all about love. Yeah. He was about respect. Yeah. Christ wasn't about getting rich. That's right. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. You want to know. You stop. You just stop. Some folks think they money. Oh, we're saving him, but I tell you, no, nah, he's grace through faith. Paul oh, said, I'm not going to save you. You got nothing to do with your money, honey. God doesn't care about your money. And, I, and I'm, I'm tired of hearing that over and over. People think they're in power. No, no, you're not in power. You're just in control for the moment. Come on. God got all power. That's God, right. Man. Paul said, look here, let love. Let's love without hypocrisy. And y'all go to hypocrisy, don't you? <laughs> Y'all know the hypocrite is. I mean, I'm just I'm in the book now. I'm in the book. I'm not making up love. That's right. Paul said love without hypocrisy. Uh -huh. So that means you need to love. Let me give y'all a definition of hypocrisy so y'all won't think I'm lying. I like to be honest and true. <laughs> hypocrisy is the practice of claiming to have more standards or beliefs to which one's behavior doesn't conform. Come on. Let me hit, can I hit play and hit rewind one more time? Oh, no. To practice, it's the practice of claiming to have moral standards. Anybody have any moral standards? That's something that you and I just ain't going to stand for. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to talk to me in the kind of way. I need some help in this house here. You're not going to talk to me in any kind of way. Because when you go to school, guess what you're going to do? You're going to talk to me. Hypocrisy, but not only do you have to love without 
out your pocket. I'm talking about the things that we need. Write these down if you want to keep them in your mind. We're going to go over them. We're talking about the personal duties in verse number nine. These are personal duties. And a duty is something that you should do. That's your duty. Your duty, my brother, your personal duty is to have poor for what is evil. What is evil? I said just like sin. Anything outside of God is evil. All right. And if you know something is evil, don't do, do it. <laughs> our mother and daddy taught us right and wrong. Our aunties, our uncles, our church members, hopefully the pastors, have shared with you what is evil. Yeah. Evil. You know, evil just doesn't sound, makes me cringe every time I think about evil. What's evil? It's the satanic forces that's all around us. And some of us struggle. We, we sit on that fence. I've never heard anything about a woman being half pregnant. Anybody? <laughs> help me now. I'm just a little slow. Help me here. Because either she is or she ain't. Yeah. See, either you are evil or you're, not. or you're not. Now, don't get me wrong. There are times when all of us have had some evil stuff in our lives. Yeah. Well, I'm going to help me here. And yeah. when that evil stuff is in your heart, then that evil stuff will sooner or later come out your mouth. Come on. Yes. Come on. says six the stones. They break my bone, but words will never hurt. That's a lie. Right? That's, right. Don't believe that. That's a lie. If I ever heard one, words hurt. They do. Oh, no, and got tired of hearing all those words of hate and evil around. He said, look, yeah, I got to write this up. All right, I got man. to get it to them because they, they're messing up. They're missing the blessing. They're missing the mark if they don't get this thing. You need to stop what's going evil. That's personal duties. But when we look at family duties, right. I'm not oh, necessarily right. talking about the family in the house, but included. Family duties, not my church family. Verses 10 through 13 deal with family duties. Okay. He said, well, what's the family duties? What should the church be doing? What, what should y'all be doing? Paul said, it's easy. It's right here. Paul said, be kind. L-Y, every time you see an L-Y is an adverb. L-Y, be kind. 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 Deep, how are you? Oh, right, Reverend Harris, I like that shirt. Don't lie to him. That's what I'm saying. Be kind. Sister Joe, you're looking younger by the day. See that? Don't lie to him. Tell the truth. Depend on God because in this particular text, 
in the latter part of chapter 12, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. All right. Yeah, you can do me wrong all you want to, but I tell you what, I know one that sits high and look, yeah. and look low, and baby, he got your back. Ain't worry about my back. He got you. He got you. And I'm going to move on, and we're going to have to go over this later on, but it say you need to rejoice in hope. Okay. And I'm going to leave you with one final point. Rejoice in hope. He said, but I want you to be patient in tribulation. You said, Reverend, I don't understand that tribulation word. Let me make it plain for you. Anybody drink? Uh, no, better put your business out there. <laughs> <laughs> anybody, anybody, anybody drink grape juice? Grape juice. Grape juice. Grape juice. <laughs> anybody had a hey, I'm sorry. I'm not here to get that. I was like, I'm going to lie. Uh, anybody drink grape juice? <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll work with it. I'll work with it. I'll work with it. Yeah. That's what tribulation should be mean. Now, it, 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 don't think that tribulation is bad. The Bible says that tribulation is good for you. That's in Romans, too. That's in the book. Paul got some good stuff here. Y'all got to read Romans. But you know what happens to an olive oil. In order to get that oil out of a sister Joe, they tell me it's got to be fresh. It's got to be fresh. And if that olive oil, if that olive will scream out, I bet it will holler. Oh, oh that hurt. Yeah, yeah, it has to be pressed. Now, if you want your orange juice in the morning. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can't throw it up and add juice come out. No. Right. Yeah. That orange got to be pressed. Give me an out. Uh, yeah. right. That thing has got to be pressed. And then some of the famous beverages that you drink. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that great juice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that stuff that Paul said do it from the stomach. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm Yes, sir. And the pressure hurts that grape, yeah. mm -hmm. just like in life. Yes. The pressure, the tribulation hurts you all. God, it hurts. Yeah. It doesn't feel good, mm -hmm. but you know what? Out of that pressure comes something beautiful. That's where we drink our orange juice. That's where we get our olive oil. That's where we get our apple juice. The pressure, the tribulations are in our lives. But Paul said in Romans 8, before he even got to chapter 12, in 8, 28, he said, all things, he said, no, he said, you know. Right. See, this ain't your first road. Y'all, we act like it's our first time going through something. <laughs> this ain't our first road. Yo, Paul said, you know, that all things, all things. bad, the ugly, the low down, the dirt, all things work. Well, it may not feel good, right. but it works together yeah. for the good. But there's a condition attached to that. I love it. It said it works together for the good, brother Mike, but for those that what? Love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Now I'm going to say this and I'm done. How can you say you love God? Anybody ever seen it before? I haven't. I haven't laid eyes on him. The scripture said no man lay eyes on this out here. So since none of us have laid eyes on God, we can come to an agreement that the scripture says how can you say you love God? Whom you never, never see. Sister Joe, read the Bible. Can you hate your brother? That's deep, my brothers and sisters. How can you say you love God? And we have a lot of people who be who are hypocritical at times. And I'm not knocking us. That's the human nature of us. See, when Adam was born, we were born into sin. We were born into sin, sin. That's on up. That's our <laughs> sinful nature. Our sinful nature is to lie. Yeah. Our sinful nature is to do wrong. Yeah. Our sinful nature is to steal. Yeah. Our yeah. Sin, the sin, the sin true. does nothing right. Yeah. Okay? But thank God for his grace and his mercy. Yes. That he found us. We didn't find him. I know some folks say, oh, I found the Lord. Baby, no, he found you. Come on. Because if it was left up to us, uh -uh, we'd still be out there drinking, smoking, uh, uh, stealing, doing whatever we wanted to do because sin feels good to us. But thanks be to God. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Forty two generations, a man that came. Now, y'all may have heard of him by the name of Christ, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yeah. Came out through 42 generations. To die for you and I. Yeah. Not for the sake of us being great, but we need to love you. Think about the life Christ lived while he was here. Yeah. 
all this mess going on around the world politically and all of that. I'm so sick of it, but you know what? I need to do what I do. I just need to keep loving my brothers and sisters and let God take care of us. Because what he needs to take care of, I'm just here to love and be here for folks it's the best that I can. And Tuesday night, we're going to go into depth and give you some good points on this stuff. Vengeance and violence says, Lord, quit trying to pay folks back. Quit trying to do it. It don't work. It'll make you feel good for about 24 hours. Route 24. I got that route. <laughs> I got it. I showed them. Oh. But when the Lord does it, I know you're going to smile a little bit. I'm lying. You're going to be like, oh, I knew it. <laughs> because the Bible says we reap what we sow. So let us just continue to love. And we just follow his instructions right here. Follow the one who was low down, who was nasty, who was a killer, who was a murderer. Because see, Paul record always said, you can't escape the love of God, no matter what you know. See, your, your mercies are brand new every day. I'm not living on last week's mercies. Today is a new day. I messed up yesterday, Lord. Forgive me. I repent. Lord, I messed up yesterday. But today, it's a brand new day. His mercies are brand new every morning that you're allowed to wake up. Guess what? you got a new day to start this thing over. The Bible says there's nothing that can separate you from the love of God. Nothing you all, no matter how low down or how good you are, nothing can separate you. So why not stay on the side of being the godly, loving Christian that God wants us to be? Amen. Yes, we're going to have some problems, trials and tribulations. We're going to get pressed. And, but the Bible says have patience in that. Yeah. And patience is a virtue. Right. Yeah. Let's have patience in that. Let God work it on now. I'm telling you, y'all, trust him. Trust him. Yeah. I'm telling you, trust him. Trust him. Trust him. I don't mean to tell my business, but I'm going to tell a little bit of it. There was a time that nobody knew what Sister Thorne and Brother Thorne was going through at one time. It was rough when you have a spouse not being treated fairly right. in a school system, in a profession that she loves. Right. And day after day after day after day, I was thinking and praying and praying and praying. I knew that, that we served an awesome God. Yes, right. And this God is awesome. He'll never leave us nor forsake us, Joshua right. Street. And I had to know that and believe that in my mind. I would call and converse with different people in the congregation. And I know it wasn't going any further. Mm -hmm. And I would talk to them. And they would encourage me. Nobody probably ever knew this unless they told me. Because I never told anyone. <laughs> but do you know it's tough sometimes when you have silence at the house? That's right. Do you know it's tough sometimes yeah. when you have silence at the house? Mm -hmm. Something is going on. And I, we just couldn't put our finger on. We couldn't control how other people thought. But that uh, it affected our household. That's just the enemy. That's what the enemy does. He comes in against you like a flood. And anything he can destroy godly, he is tilting his head and ready to march on. So we just had to trust in God. And I'll never forget it. She told me, I thought about it. I don't know if I need to go to church this Sunday. Told me after the fact, but she went to church. Went to church and all of a sudden, boom! And for them, I told you that Sunday, I told you, you sometimes you just want to throw in the towel. Yeah. 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 But when you throw in the towel, guess what God do? Right. Throw it right on back. You can wipe some tears. Wipe your eyes. It's going to be all right. So let us not, let us just know, trust God, y'all. I'm telling you, I know. I never doubted, but it took some faith in it. We didn't have God in our life. I don't know where. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know where. We don't know. But the scriptures tell us we got to rejoice in hope. Yes. And I was hoping, Lord, that they going to come to an end. I wish I knew when. Yeah. They're going to come to an end soon Amen. rather than later. So I want to encourage you, folks, just trust in God. Don't let the enemy win because that's what he wants to do, steal, kill, and destroy. I'm done. And if the cloud come to give us a selection, I just want to tell you out there, I know some of you are struggling, you're going through. you got some things you're really dealing with, and the pressures of life is on you, the tribulations are pressing you. But I don't want to tell you, if you want to please just turn over a new leaf. Turn it over to somebody who has all, all the power in the palm of their hands. We can't do anything but pray for you and talk to you. But if you really trust in the type of thing,
hold on, church. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This thing called love is something serious, you all. We have to keep the love of God in our hearts. Can't get weary and well doing, for the Bible says you will reap if you faint not. Sometimes we want to faint and fall out. Right. The summertime gone, so it shouldn't be that bad. We should be, <laughs> we should be able to press on for it. And if you need to, lean on your brothers and sisters. Lean on your brothers and sisters. I'm telling you, because I have had to. And I've had to, being the leader per se of the church, that I know there are folk under the sound of my weak voice that have to do the same. And it's okay. It's okay. It's making me less of a man to have had to call Brother Terry or Sister Ruff. Yeah, I want to hear from all angles, Brother James, Sister Jimmy. I want to hear from all y'all. I'm dealing with something. I need some help. And I thank y'all for not being judgmental and being loving. Because that's what a family does. A church is not somewhere you just go to. But it's a family you belong to. And that being said, as Ezra stood before the people and began to read the, the gospel, the Bible says the church with their heads bowed and hands lifted in the air, the church began to say amen.